However, another important aspect which I want to touch for you all to be prospective doctors, that there is a 1982 code of ethics for you. And that code of ethics prescribes so many things including an aspect that as a doctor you cannot advertise your services. At the worst you are allowed to put a signboard introducing yourself along with your legally valid degrees. Don't put fancy abbreviations like TOCT, FAMS, God knows how many abbreviations people put. On the signboard, half of the abbreviations the doctor may, himself may not be knowing. I don't know who they want to impress. Don't put all that. Because it is a violation of the code of ethics. Secondly, you'd be surprised to know that even the dimension, the size of your signboard, the color combination of your signboard is also prescribed. So do not put some pictures on your signboard. Like I've seen one of a dentist signboard having a cartoon of a tooth. A tooth is behaving as if he's a human being and the tooth has two legs, two hands and he's smiling and pointing towards the doctor's name. But due to this doctor I'm smiling. Don't do all this. It is all prohibited. You cannot put hoardings, you cannot distribute pamphlets offering your services, you cannot even put your some kind of advertisement in a medical shop. Don't give some kind of festival offers. Diwali Dhamaka, treatment per do patient ka treatment free. Don't do this. Nor can we do. I mean, it may be funny for you, but can I, as a lawyer, advertise that do divorce paid, divorce free? <laughs> How can? I? I mean, so don't do all these kind of gimmicks. <coughs> Don't even, other than your clinic, where you can put your fee chart, you cannot demonstrate your fee chart beyond your clinic. You cannot publicize it. You cannot compare it with another doctor's fee chart. Don't do this. You cannot put a comparative chart. All this has been prescribed in the book of Ethics and Etiquettes of 1982 Regulations. And it is all available. Before you begin practice, obtain a copy of the Code of Ethics. I'll take your questions. Now, another important aspect is that is being faced by a lot of doctors in Bombay across the stream that where do you open your clinic? Because Bombay is divided into certain zones, residential zone, industrial zone, commercial zone. So the question mark is, can a doctor open a clinic in a residential building? And the, there are umpteen number of cases going on in the court, many of them I am representing the doctors, 
who've opened the clinic in a cooperative society and the society should notice to them that you cannot do so as if you're committing some kind of a sin now fortunately for you there are landmark judgments over and above statute that in certain dimension a doctor can open a clinic in a residential premises and this is over and above the statute when I said that that the judgments of the courts establish this even the statute establishes the dimension of your clinic that in a residential premises how much portion can you put your clinic because the entire residential flat cannot be put as a clinic because that is beyond the statute but a portion of your residential flat or your home can be used as your clinic this is the statute over and above that statute there are so many judgments which have saved the doctor like for us lawyers also we are allowed to have our offices and residential premises and the reason and the logic the court held is that these are not commercial activities the professions of lawyers doctors etc are not a commercial activity now this makes me realize that though there is an oath which is taken this is called hypocritical oath I don't know why it is called hypocritical because it, maybe it's the truth that though you take an oath that you would be serving humanity you don't do anything without fee so maybe the courts are living in another era where we they think that lawyers and doctors are doing only service there are so many such cases where the clients are turned down if they cannot pay the fee I don't know about doctors the doctors may be doing the service or continue to be doing so but I don't know whether you do or you don't but the courts believe that you do and that is why you are allowed to conduct your clinic in a portion of a residential premises because it is not considered as a commercial activity so this brings me to the next point that whenever a patient comes the fee part must be informed in advance you cannot charge a fee on the result oriented basis that if you cure then I am entitled for this fee if I could cure you then only you pay this is prohibited you have to inform your fee in advance and charge your fee only limited to what you have informed your fee cannot be result oriented to your treatment because that is prohibited like we lawyers cannot it is prohibited by bar council regulations and rules that we start charging result oriented that if I win your case then pay me this much we are not commission agents we cannot charge commissions or the portions of the result of the proceeds so you are also prohibited to have a negotiation that all right if you cure then you pay me if you don't cure don't pay me don't indulge into this because it is prohibited tell your fees with full confidence that this is my fee and nothing beyond this I'll charge and if you find that even that fee which you have quoted is inaffordable to the patient do some relaxation concession discount or may not charge at all but never charge beyond what you have quoted you may give discount you may charge less that is allowed not beyond that 
So these are the certain medical legal aspects which I wanted to inform you as tomorrow's practitioners. And now I have seen so many of you have been raising hands for some questions. I'm ready to take your questions. Yes, lady, you have some question? Pushbu. It is all prohibited and bad in law. Now, Kushbu, when I said it is bad in law and prohibited, but still if it's going on, so maybe it confuses mind that how it is going on. So I'll tell you by an example that there are so many rules and regulations and laws are in place but aren't they violated on day-to-day -day basis for example a very common example is that the rule says that you have to stop on a red signal isn't it a rule But if there is no Havaldar, how many of you stop? People violate. And I have observed in Bombay Khushbu that people who are driving vehicles more than watching the signal watch the Havaldar. They are more concerned about the uniform that if there is no Havaldar they are not going to be caught. Though there is a warning for them also that now there are CCTV cameras which are being put on the signal, so don't violate that. You may see that so many people come from front on the wrong side. Though the law is, the rules are that they, you have to drive on the left. But people sometimes take a shortcut. So Khushbu, what you are watching on internet and all is absolutely bad in law. It's just a matter of time that somebody lodges a complaint and that person would be facing the consequences. Another important question that in case some communicable disease is there, are you obliged to inform to the family or not? Please understand, in all usual circumstances, you will have to inform to the family. Unless it's of confidential nature which is raising to the consequence of divorces like that. N normal circumstances, there is also a predicament among doctors that do they have to communicate it to the family or to the patient itself. Sometimes the family complains that why have you informed to the patient? That patient has gone into depression by knowing that the patient is suffering from such disease like HIV or cancer. So that predicament is normally there. And the statutes do not clarify that in all cases do you have to inform to the patient or not. The statutes do not clarify whom you have to inform. But the case which I cited about the confidentiality and the secrecy is where the consequences are going to be disastrous. So in all normal circumstances for the benefit of the patient to get the right kind of treatment you will have to inform the family otherwise it will be deficient to the patient itself the patient he or she will never get a right kind of a treatment to the right kind of hospital he will not be taken to that so in normal circumstances you will have to inform but as I said that while informing you have to be very careful and cautious and do not jump to the conclusions like suppose if somebody is suffering from a fatal disease you need not to give your conclusion that this person is curable, non-curable, how many days he has how many days he does not have because patients normally ask us silly questions. Kitne din bache hai doctor sahab? Ab doctor sahab ne bata diya pandra bis din hai. Jaldi jaldi will likhwa lo. Chaturvedi sahab ke paas jao aur apna documents banwa lo. 
और वो आदमी अगर दो महीने से ज्यादा जी गया तो वो आपको फिर सू कर देगा फैमिली भी सू कर देगा आपने पंद्रह बीस दिन कहा तो दो महीने रह गए सो डोंट स्टार्ट जजिंग द लाइफ टाइम और द कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ अ डिजीज हाउस ऑफ फेटल इट मे बी बी रियलिस्टिक बट डू नॉट बी pessimistic